All right, what is the equation of the line that passes through the point negative 2 comma 7 has a slope of 0? All right, so first thing you need to know here is what does a slope of 0 look like? And that is going to be a horizontal line. Kind of looks like this right here. All right, now uh, in equations with slopes of zeros, you just kind of need to know this. It really helps out if you have this memorized. It's usually in the format y equals something and since it's a slope of zero you don't have like an m or anything the m is zero so usually it's just y equals a random number all right so in this case here it has to cross through negative two comma seven so that'd be like something kind of like this right here all right so then what we do is actually we look here at the seven right there and we say that is our answer right there. So y equals 7. That is all you do right there. That would be the equation of a horizontal line that crosses through 7. So that's about all you can do there. Now x equals lines. Just remember here um, x equals lines are vertical lines. So this is a vertical. The other one here is vertical. So if they wanted a vertical line that crossed through that point, you know, this is actually, you didn't need to do this here, but if they wanted a vertical line that hits through that point, you would have gotten x equals and then negative 2 instead. So be kind of careful there on that. But h is not actually correct in this case. Um, you know, we don't want to do x is 7 because the y equals line is your horizontal line. And then don't do y equals negative 2 because that's not the right y value. That's an x value there. So y equals 7 on that one. All right, next one here, which order pair is in the solution set of this inequality right here? Uh, One-thirds x and then plus four. So this uh, all works out the same as far as graphing. It's y equals mx plus b. Okay, so that means our b is f positive four. So we're going to start there. And then we're going to go up one and over three with our m. So up one over three, up one over three, up one over three. And you can do a line there. Now, the reason I did a solid line here, check this out here, they have greater than or equal to. So you're going to do a solid line in that situation. Now, if it was just greater than, you would do a dashed line right there. And the difference is uh, as far as a dashed line versus a solid line. A solid line means we include all of the points on the actual line. So any point on the line is actually a solution. Any point on a dashed line would not be a solution. Okay, uh, and then also we need to do the shading here because it says greater than or equal. So that means greater than typically means up. So we're going to shade up here on this. So anything in the shaded region or on the line is a solution. I'll write that down. Anything in the shaded region. Let me write. There we go. So anything on a shaded region or on the solid line. Is a solution. All right. Now the opposite of that. One thing here. And it doesn't really you know, come up in this case. Um, anything on um, a dashed line. Here, let's say, uh, let's say points on. Points on dashed lines are not solutions, which we don't see that here in this case, so it doesn't even matter. Okay, now as far as which ones go where here, we can say, okay, we got negative 6, comma 1 right there. There's that point right there, so that is not in our shaded region. We have negative 1, comma 6. That looks like that is going to be our winner for our answer choice there. But let's go check the other ones here. 6, comma, negative 1. Where's that? Right over here. That is not in our region right there. And then 1, comma, negative 6 right there. Even if you didn't really know a whole lot about what solutions or non-solutions are, you could probably do, you know, if you know how to graph lines, you could probably do, you know, one of these things that's not like the other and figure out that that one point, the uh, negative 1, comma 6, has to be the solution there. So, 
anyways, that's all that you got on there. So you need to be in the shaded region to be a solution. You need to be not in the shaded region if it is not a solution. And you got solid lines. Solid lines are solutions. Dashed lines, points on the dashed lines are not solutions. So be careful with that. All right, 38. Which table does not show y is a function of x here? So this is your classic uh, math test question right here. I've seen this on pretty much every standardized test. Uh, even college entrance exams, they always ask this question, is this a function or not? All right? And if you go and check out my little resource, um, my little cheat sheet with all the rules and stuff like that, little extra things, you can kind of see what I have written on there. But um, as far as this stuff here, we are looking for one output per one input. So we don't want any repeated output, or one, we don't want any repeated inputs essentially right there. We only want one output for one input. So that means like if x is 5, I don't want x to be like 5 comma 7, and then 5 comma 10. That means we have multiple output. All right, we don't want multiple outputs. Multiple outputs mean they are not functions. If it'll let me write. All right. So, usually my shortcut is to look for repeated x values. So I look here, I got one tenth, uh, one eighth, one fifth, one fourth, one half. None of the x values repeat, so that is uh, not, or that, that is a function right there. And we're trying to figure out what is not a function here. So that one's a function. So we're going to go g, you got 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That is a function, so that will not answer our question. Uh, we got negative 0 0.2, 0 0.6, negative 1.3, 1.0, and then negative 0.02. So look here at this one. Our x values right here, the x value of negative 0.2 repeats right there. Notice that the y values are different. You have 5.8 and 8.1. This means that this is not a function. If you want to circle something, the reason because it's because of this 0.02 right there it has multiple outputs. And we do not like multiple outputs. Multiple outputs uh, means the relation is not a function. All right, it's always good to just double check the last one here. Notice you got negative 24, 21, 24, negative 27, and 29 right there. So that one works out uh, rather well. Be careful, J here has multiple output values. They have the repeated out output values, but that's okay because the input values are different. All right, but usually what I look for is repeated X values. If the X value repeats, that's usually a good red flag that you're gonna have multiple outputs. So it's gotta be H. All right, what do we got here? Projectiles launched into the air from the ground. The table shows the height of the projectile, h of t. So that's basically saying the height at different times. Based on the table, uh, which of the functions can be used to model the situation? So when I see a bunch of data like this, and I need to write an equation, and then I see a bunch of these answer choices that have decimals and big numbers and stuff like that, I'm going straight to the calculator and doing something that's called regression. Okay, regression, what is that? That is, oh, but I didn't want to do that. Let's see if I can close that. Okay, so regression is using your calculator to get the line of best fit, but your calculator does a bunch of stuff to get the absolute best line of fit possible that hits all that data. So uh, to do all this here, we need to go to stat on our calculators right over here by the arrow keys and edit. We're going to input a bunch of data here. So bear with me if you want to skip ahead in the video to where I am done. To follow along, you can do that. I'm just going to take a second. Maybe I should have planned this out beforehand. Uh, be careful when typing in. If you type in one number wrong, that could throw the whole thing off, which I have done multiple times. Here's where it gets fun. A bunch of numbers here. Watch out for you people with a little bit of dyslexia like me.
and type in the numbers backwards. Just little things like that. Just sometimes it's even good to just double and triple check after you're done typing in everything. I think that it's good. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and different y values. So. And I think that is good right there. All right. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to pull this back up just for a second. Oh, okay. I didn't mean to make it full screen, but there you go. Uh, notice here it says. Well, actually, it doesn't say here, but in every single one of these has, instead of an x squared, they have a t squared right there. So I automatically know this thing's kind of like going up and then possibly going down right there. Uh, so it's, it's a projectile, right? So it's being launched in the air and then coming back down. So that means this is a quadratic. All right, it's a quadratic graph. That means uh, it's kind of like your classic U-shaped graph. So we need to tell our calculator to look for that type of graph right there versus doing what we call like a, a like a line right there, linear regression. We don't want to do that. We want to use quadratic regression. Now to actually get the regression to come out here, you're going to hit stat. You're going to go over here to calculate, and then we're going to scroll down to quadratic regression. Uh, be careful because 7 also starts with Q. Uh, QUA right there is quartic regression, which we don't really use those in Algebra 1 a whole lot, so don't worry about that. So we can scroll down here to number 5 and use quadratic regression. Uh, once this screen pops up, you can go change, you know, what the X and Y lists are, but we don't need to usually do that. And then we will hit Calculate, and then hopefully we get something kind of similar to... What we have as our answer choices here. So I'm going to see if I can get this to where it kind of shows a little bit. Our answer choices. So, yeah, there we go. There's your different answer choices. So, I notice, you know, my A value or the thing in front of X squared is negative 4.8. You could even say 4.9. Uh, so, I see two options with that. Um, notice they both have the same B value next to X, 294, 295, once you round, but then the C value is a little different. So 0.57, that rounds up to 0.6. So it looks like B is our best option in that case. So that is what you do there for these types of problems. Now be careful too, uh, sometimes they might ask for something called a correlation coefficient. So if you go here to stat, right here, or actually, I'm sorry, go to mode, and then scroll down towards the bottom here, there's something called stat diagnostics, and it gives you a couple more options turned on to do some regression stuff, and it gives you more data, essentially. I guess the reason it's set to off, maybe it typically uh, takes longer to load it, I'm not sure, but go ahead and highlight on, and then um, press enter, and then back out of there. And then if we go and do the regression again, if we hit stat, go over to calculate, scroll down to number five, or just click number five, and do the regression again, it's going to give you this value, it's called R, and that is the correlation coefficient. And it's how accurate your line is right here. So notice this is point nine 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 five through one. Right, so that basically what that means there is it's really accurate. Your R value, or actually it's not even, that's your R squared. So if you square root 0 0.9999999 and get R by itself here, so it's square root both of those right there, or square root, you know, both sides, I guess, right there. That's basically saying it's got really strong correlation right there. Now, did you need to know that for this one? Not necessarily, but, you know, you want to be prepared for any type of question that they ask. So this does have strong correlation if they ask it. And that's that R value. Okay. So a little extra tidbit there. You know, hopefully that doesn't come up, but you know, there you go if it does. All right, last one here, uh, which value of X makes the equation right here true? This is a really fancy way of saying solve for X. 
All right. Now, some of you guys are just going to go take your x values and plug them back in and see if it you know works out. You can do that here. I'm going to actually get x by itself here. Uh, I do see a lot of uh, parentheses going on here, so we need to distribute to take care of that. So that's 0 0.75, if it'll write. X and then plus 20 right there, 75% of 20. I think that's 15 right there. So I'm going to write that. You can double check with the calculator if you need. You need to distribute the 0 0.05. So it's 0 0.5, or I'm sorry, I said 0.05. It's actually 0.5x. And then 0.5, that's basically half. Half of uh, negative 2 should be negative 1 right there. Uh, before I start moving things left and right, I want to combine my like terms. You have 2, and then you have minus 1. So that'll be 1 plus 0.5x and 0.75x plus 15. All right, and then we need to get our x's together. So I'm going to subtract 0.5. You know, you can almost think about it kind of like money. 0.5 is kind of like 50 cents, 0 0.75, 75 cents. So you'd have 0.25 left, or 25 cents, if you're thinking in those terms. And then what do we need to do here? I guess uh, get rid of the 15. We need to subtract 15. So that's negative uh, 14, I guess, 0.25x. And then 0.25 times x, opposite of times is divide. So divide those, and 14 divided by 0.25 It's 56, but actually it's got a negative there. So that's got to be negative 56. So it looks like J is our answer there. And that is it for this segment.